I, I use Peter's chocolate. I'm sure it's milk chocolate. Mike was your granddad? Yeah, Mike was my granddad. So you, my grandfather was your your mom's brother. I don't think Mike lived there much because he and, and Jim didn't get along very well. And then look at this picture. So now we found Daniel and we went and got your paper. See them looking at it? Mm -hmm. This is your chart. They were all trying to figure out. And this is so cool. This is Eva Katerina. And that's Daniel. That's the one that came from Germany. Oops, I'll get that. Mm, I touched it. And it says Geboren, which I looked it up, and the German translation means born. 11 no, in Walroth Kerhessen, Germany on November 11th of 1801 and then it says Gestorben which means died in June of 19, 1875. Now, this was James mother and dad Eva, Michael and Amelia. Right, right. Hmm? Correct. But I think he's buried there but she isn't. Right, we couldn't find her. Your grandfather was James Freshcorn, mm -hmm. and she was married uh, Pauline. He was married to Pauline. Pauline Studer. Now, did you have any, you have any remembrance of her at all? No, she died in 29. I was two years old. Okay. And as far as Jim Frischkorn was, do you have much knowledge or re recollections of him? Oh yeah, because he died in 48. Right, okay. And he lived just a couple of hours, some little distance, yeah. Because we always went over there. Did you go over to his oh, house? Oh, quite often, yeah. He was called Pup. Pup, oh. <laughs> what did he do? What was his... Well, really, as I knew him, he never did much of anything. Uh, first, they came, they were down at Park Gate, down by Elwood. He was the toll collector for the bridge there. Ah. Then uh, there used to be a, a, the Harmony Short Line, when, and it went across, across the road here. He was the, um, one of the guys that tended the substation which was at the back of his farm. Now, I remember going back there. Then that line closed. <clears throat> and he dragged up from there a lot of the old metal machinery, which he let rot in the farmyard. But I think most of these kids uh, lived on money that they inherited from their father. Because Jim never really worked. Uncle Joe, which we knew very well, he never really worked. And the rest of them, I don't know. Now, they would have inherited money from whom? Who? Uh, the, the father. Michael? Michael, Michael yeah. Michael, okay. Then, after he, after he died, she went and lived with one of the daughters. And that's all they ever found. I mean, and she's not even buried beside Michael. Yeah. But we didn't know where. Mabel's the oldest. Okay. Mm. And then what, Mabel, then Michael? Yeah. Uh, he always wanted a boy, so he always called her John. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And uh, then it would have been your mother would have been the next one? Yeah, then Hilda was the younger. Okay. Siblings, uh, you and John, and there was a... Carl, yeah. And he died early on? 46, yeah, he was 14. Was he? Uh, what did he die of? He had rheumatic fever. Was that endemic at the time, or was it? Uh, no, but they had no cure for it. They only had things like sulfur drugs and it didn't do any good. Right. But he died here. Well, we've been here 80 years. <laughs> Pretty good. It's called it. <laughs> we came here in 35. Do you remember uh, December 7th, 1941? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about that? Um, we were on the porch here, sitting on the steps, and somebody came and said, I mean, I would have been like in eighth grade then, at the, yeah, Fort. yeah, he had a farm, I think it was 14 acres there. Was that the family farm? Yeah, that's what, and the back of that was where that substation was that ran the, uh, 
the trolley that went down to Pittsburgh. It called the Harmony Short Line. So the family farm, which your mother would have grown up on, uh, where is that from here? Well, you go up maybe about a mile and a half. You know, I remember the trolley just basically when they were tearing up the tracks because we lived on the next road from my grandfather called Rose Stop. But I remember them tearing up. I never remember riding that though. But I remember seeing trolleys on it. We lived on Rose Stop Road. We left there in 1933. Okay. So that trolley must have been still there then. Yeah. But it was shortly afterwards they did. But uh, yeah, he was like the engineer back there. He and another guy. I remember going back there and seeing all those big wheels and. And for some reason, when they abandoned it, he dragged up all that metal machinery, I'd probably to sell it. So, so Pauline died in 1929. Mm -hmm. uh, your mother would have been... Uh, she, she was about 17, I think, when I... Yeah. Well, they were divorced, but she would come back and live for a while, and... They had a very tumultuous relationship. I think he was real mean to her from what they said, but he was never that way with the girls, though. Sure. And he, then after she died, I know he had at least two different housekeepers, which he, when they kept her, I remember I could never figure out, he, he paid them, what was it, $15 a month. Yeah, one was Catherine. And the other one? Uh, I left. Her last name was Moorhead, but I forgot her first name. I met them. Did you? I okay. met them once. They okay. came up to visit. Uh, I was staying with my grandmother and grandfather in Rochester, mm. and I went with him to pick up these two women. They were older at mm -hmm. the time. I was just a child. And I think it was Mary Catherine. And yeah, she was a nice lady. And I didn't know who they were. And um, my grandmother seemed a little uncomfortable about explaining who they were to me. <laughs> yeah. I was just a child. And she said, well, why don't you just call them aunt? Yeah. <laughs> Catherine left and got married. But what was that? Josephine. Was Josephine. Yes, yeah. that's correct. And then he wouldn't give her a raise, so she left and took a job down in Pittsburgh. And not long afterwards, he had a stroke and died. That was in 48. They were like the Amish. He never had electricity, never had a sink or running water or a bathroom. Built an addition onto the house <clears throat> and built a new garage, but never painted them. <laughs> for a humble lifestyle. It was pleasant. And for <clears throat> Christmas, we all got one big orange. <laughs> oh, my, me and my three brothers. <laughs> Did he dance? He was a, a real about? friendly guy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Real friendly guy. Yeah. So sometimes he'd walk her over here just to get dinner because my mother would prepare something for him. Or then he'd walk home. Yeah, we had a couple old Model Ts. In fact, the car that I drove to college with was a 1938 Ford Coupe, which uh, my family bought from Jim because he had gone partly blind, uh, for $800. Wow. It was eight, eight years old when he got it, when we got it. And I drove to college in that old blue Ford Coupe. Where did you go to college? Slipper Rock, basically. Rock. Mm -hmm. Now, you had to be in probably the first in the family to, to go, go to college. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of you. That's a big deal. Yeah, I never thought much about it. I wanted to go, so I went. Oh, my dad only went to third. There you go. I think my mother finished like eighth grade. Then, of course, she got married when she was 15, so. You mentioned he had a good relationship with uh, his daughters, mm -hmm. the three daughters. What was his relationship like with Mike? Do, do you remember? Very strained, yeah. you know. We'd heard that. Mm. You know why that was? I don't think Mike ever lived up here. Huh. Mm. I think he lived with somebody else. Yeah. But he never liked Mabel's husbands, and he didn't like Hilda's husband. 
but he liked my dad. <laughs> I said, but see, Hilda, well, she was about 17, and she, they used to go down to a place called Willow Grove to the dance every uh -huh. Saturday night, and that's where she met Patsy. And she was then sneaking after he'd go to bed, she'd sneak out the bedroom window. <laughs> then one night she stuck out and never came back. He came over here, and not here, so he looked all through the house. He saw she's over here, but uh, but he never cared much for Patsy. And Mabel had been married twice, though. Uh, Wallace, well, I didn't know him. His name was Wallace, I think. Did they elope? Is that what happened? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was just 17 in high school. Right. I remember going over there. The, they had an old iron coal-fired cook stove. And Hilda would be ironing clothes. She'd sit this big metal iron on to get it hot on the pleat. Oh, and yeah. then iron. Then sit it back on. I don't know how they ever got by. <laughs> they had no central heating. Your mother lived until when? Oh, one. Oh, one? Yeah, she lived longer than him. She, yeah. was, she was almost 90. My gosh. She had been. She died in December, and she had been ninety that February. See, my mother, having been married so young, uh, toward the end she had some sort of. A, it wasn't Alzheimer's or something. Uh, she'd have a, what would you call it? A, a seizure-like, and she could tell everything vividly from day one. Wow. And she had a, I, mean, I could always tell when she was going to have a seizure because I would get all this information. Yeah. And I'm, oh, no, it's not a little bit before she, she said, I'm sorry the way I, <laughs> I raised you, but I was just a little girl. I didn't know how. She right. said, <laughs> yeah, they were going there too. Yeah. Mm. On Memorial Day. Yeah, every Memorial Day. No. But it was Hilda who bought the markers for her mother and dad's grave. Oh. Yeah. See, Hilda was about six when her mother died. So she went to live with Uncle Joe, who lived out someplace in Beaver County. And school was to start. She'd always tell the story, and she didn't know if he was going to come back and get her or not. So shortly before school started, he went to Uncle Joe, who lived down near Riverview, they call it, and brought her back. And he pretty well raised her with the help of these two housekeepers. Wow. Mm. That was a... Uh... That was a hard life. Yeah. You know, we were closer to Hilda than anybody. Hey, it's only up the road from okay, where we're. Just go. to yeah, say we saw it. it. I, don't, I don't know the people who live there. People who bought it, their name was Shinsky, but they all died. And... What are you looking at here, Elmer? What the... <laughs> no, no, I don't need any any pictures. <laughs> no, but we have the, uh, you, this is where the house was, right? Yeah. I mean, it was just this part, that part was built on afterwards, that was the porch. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember the pump? Oh, yep, yeah, the pump. They don't use that much. Uh, someone told me that the water went bad in the, but that's where the pump was. And the barn was over there. There are chicken coops and stuff down this way. Yeah. And over here, was this part of the farm too, over in this yeah, area? Yeah, most of them went this way. Yep. They owned that, all that land there, and all this. But the last time I had been around this way, the, the old barn was there. You said it was the Harmon Shorts? Yeah, Harmon Short Line. Harmon Short Line. And from my Cascade Park and the Pittsburgh. How big was the barn? Mm, not about as big as ours. Uh -huh. But it was a two-story thing. I always had a cow or two. Had some sheep. I remember help shearing the sheep. You had a crank, a thing that you cranked, and on the end of it up, you know, there was a shear, and one guy had the shears, but this crank turned the shears. We always went up to a S.L.I. Black, who lived next for the shearing. The old buildings down this way, one was called the smokehouse, 
and he would put your hogs in and then. Here's the foundation of the old barn. I don't remember too much that there. And I'm trying to think, we used to go back and forth from Conneaut Lake, where we would go in the summertime. Grandfather always said, yeah, that farm was down in back of Elwood City. My dad had a farm behind Elwood City. Is that about right? Uh, Park Gate, they called it. They called this Bart Gate? Park. Park, Park Gate. Gate. That's where the, they moved from down there up here when he got the job at the uh, power station. Uh.